Hi, I'm Cami, Vice President for Adventist World Radio. March 13 is a special day for us this year as it is our Global Offering Sabbath where you can support the work that AWR is doing all around the world. My name is Dr. Dwayne McKee. I'm president of Adventist World Radio, and I want to thank each of you for your wonderful prayers and support for AWR. This year is our 50th anniversary. God has given us so much to be thankful for. Here are just a few highlights. We have new radio stations in Paris, France, and Kinshasa, Congo. This means we are now broadcasting to the two largest French-speaking cities in the world. Our worldwide team uses cell phone evangelism to spread the Three Angels message to over 200,000 people weekly. Our five shortway towers in Guam continue to broadcast the Adventist message to over one third of the world. AWR 360 broadcast of baptism is perfectly illustrated in the Philippines. After four years of broadcasting, along with boots on the ground missionaries, a 50 year terrorist war is coming to an end as rebels are laying down their AK 47s and being baptized. I'm thrilled to have just completed my online series, Earth's Final Countdown, and I invite you to join thousands in watching at awr.org forward slash Bible. Now let's hear what Cammie's been doing during lockdown from her living room. AWR responded to our world's pandemic in the spring of 2020 by launching an online evangelistic series titled Unlocking Bible Prophecies. These 14 end time episodes have received over 7 million views collectively from the social media channels of AWR and the General Conference. There was 1.5 million views across Russia alone. This series is currently being translated into over 40 languages. TV stations from the Philippines to India are airing this series on their local channels. Our goal with AWR and as Adventists is to have our Bible-based messages show up on the first page of Google and YouTube searches. Google the phrases Second Coming, Mark of the Beast, Sabbath Day, and Bible Prophecies. And praise God, our videos continue to rank in the first spots of these search results. Testimonials pour in daily from almost every continent of thousands of baptisms, from high priests to hired hitman. Here's just one of the amazing stories. In an undisclosed country, we meet Liam. He is a powerful and top commanding officer in the army and has complete control over all military operations, daily carrying out the wishes of the country's dictator. Recently, someone began sending him video messages straight to his cell phone. These messages spoke of a God of love and forgiveness, a God who could change lives. At first, Commander Liam was annoyed that someone had found his private phone number and was sending these videos to him. But then he found out it was a friend of his and so decided to watch. Pretty soon, he was hooked. Unbeknownst to him, he was watching AWR's Unlocking Bible Prophecy series, and each presentation was more compelling to him than the one before. Over the years, Commander Liam had made many enemies, so to protect himself and his family, he hired a witch to cast spells on them. She was very powerful, and he came to rely on her. One night, as Liam was watching one of the AWR videos, his witch found him and commanded him to stop and listen to her. She exclaimed, This woman you are listening to has a magic more powerful than mine, and I need that power. The commander invited her to watch the messages with him, and as of February 2021, we are thrilled to report that they are both now taking Bible studies and are connecting with our local AWR evangelists in the field. If you feel impressed to give, there are several options. One, mark your envelope with AWR so that these funds go directly to Adventist World Radio. Two, you can also easily donate online at awr.org. Whatever amount you give goes to the front lines and supports work of winning souls all around the world. I would like to thank each of you personally for continuing to support the work of AWR, the ministry that goes wherever air goes. With God, there are no walls, no borders, and no limits. 
From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR 360. I grew up a farm boy in North Dakota until I went away to Union College and uh, met uh, and married this young lady. And uh, two weeks before our fourth child was born, we uh, started medical school and moved up here to this delightful Ultawa, Tennessee area. And uh, so we love it here. When we went to the rally here and saw what AWR is doing and how they could get into areas where, as far as I know, no other ministries can, can reach. And some of the stories that were given with Cami and uh, places they've gone and Duane, that really impressed me. And I said, this is a really worthy ministry. Uh, I met Jeff Wilson, who said he could do our will and trust here. It was painless. Uh, it went smoothly. Jeff took care of it all. And to to get the trust uh, without any out-of-pocket cost was way beyond what I expected. Around the world, there are many who have never heard of Jesus before. Follow along to see what God is doing to reach those who are hungry for the gospel. Greetings, my friends. I'm Dr. Dwayne McKee with Adventist World Radio, President. Uh, it's great to see you again this month. I want to, I want to share some things with you about my history. Uh, the year was 1889. I wasn't alive then, <laughs> but uh, this, this is the land runs that were taking place. Remember, I, I've said before that Kathy's grandparents, great grandparents, came from the Volga River in, in Russia. They were Germans who had immigrated there and then to the states and to North Dakota. Mine came from the same place. They they came to the states and North Dakota. Now, mine were a little softer. Hers were tough. <laughs> and so they stayed in Dakota and they, they went on the land runs there and they got a piece of land. And mine, however, heard about land in Oklahoma and they had heard that Oklahoma was a lot warmer than North Dakota. And so in, in 1891, the second or third land run, they made the land run into a place near Chandler, Oklahoma. That's where our farm is now. And, and, and they they, got 160 acres. My great-grandfather and great-grandmother spoke German only. My grandmother was, was with, she was a young girl then, she was learning English. They were there for some time, not, oh, I think it's about a mile from where they were, mile, mile yeah, a mile and a half, mile and a quarter, something like that. There, there were a number of Germans around and they, they started to have a, a church. And they had a series of evangelistic meetings, kind of like the ones that Cammy is doing and I'm doing. They, they were doing this prophecy thing. And so my great-grandparents and my grandmother went and they got so excited. They, they were learning about the truth, learning about the Sabbath, learning that Jesus was coming back soon. They got so excited. And, and so they prepared to be baptized. This was 1898. They built their house, they had farm, they had cotton and different things. And they were going to these meetings and they were preparing to get baptized. My great-grandfather got very sick. And so he, he kind of, he went into a coma, then he came out of it and back and forth, and he had a really deep sleep, and my grandmother was taking the fever away and uh, wetting his brow and everything. And, and then he woke up and he said, I just had a dream. Really? I, I just had a dream. Remember, this is 1898. He said, I dreamt 
I was in heaven. And Jesus came up to me and he said, he said, tell your people, tell your family to get ready because I am coming soon. And so my great grandmother said, well, how soon, how soon? He said, I don't know. He didn't say, but I, I think he said, it seemed to me it would be like a hundred years or so. A hundred years or so. That was 1898. It's a hundred years or so now. I think Jesus is coming so soon. Just kitty cornered across from that 160 acres where my great grandparents and my grandmother, when they homesteaded, kitty cornered across. My parents bought a farm many years ago. I was born on that farm. My parents are gone now. Part of it was given to Kathy and I as an inheritance. And we've been praying about this. We've been praying, Lord, we see all this stuff happening around the world, uh, in America and Africa, and it's, it's chaos. And it seems like it's getting worse and worse. And so you know, I, I love what Adventist World Radio is doing. We say we, we go where air goes. You go to the most difficult place on the earth. You, yeah, the most terrible, scariest places like North Korea, the Amazon, any place, Adventist World Radio is there. And if we're not, we'll be there soon. We're reaching the whole world through the internet. We're reaching the whole world through shortwave. Every means, with all the things together, we're reaching the world. Jesus is coming soon. That's the message. And so I, I said to Kathy the other day, let's, let's sell the farm, the farm that our parents gave me. And when we get to heaven, we're gonna tell my mom and dad, we're gonna say, you know what we did? <laughs> we sold the farm. And we put it, we gave it to Adventist World Radio. We put it in a, a charitable gift annuity. And that's like an inheritance. You, give, you take the inheritance, you give it to Adventist World Radio, and they, they pay you a little bit. As long as you live, when you die, it all goes to them. Wow. We're so excited that we could be a part of finishing the work. Kathy and I believe in Adventist World Radio. We believe in the mission. We think this is the ministry that's reaching the world for Jesus. Thank you for your support and your prayers. And our prayer is, Lord Jesus, even so, come quickly. I want Jesus to come. Don't you? Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, I, I pray for each one of our lovely people who love us and support us and pray for us. I pray that as we give our gifts to your work to help finish your work around the world, that the work will be finished and will fulfill by God's grace, help fulfill the gospel commission that Jesus gave us to go into all the world and to preach and to teach and baptize. I thank you and Jesus come. Yes, even so, come Lord Jesus. Have you ever thought about how you could leave a lasting legacy that will advance the cause of God into the future and at the same time provide the needed income for your life during retirement? Adventist World Radio offers a charitable gift annuity program that will provide you a fixed income for life and then the balance can go into the cause of God to advance the work of Adventist World Radio around the world, a ministry that has no walls, no borders, and no limits. You can call for assistance Adventist World Radio at 800-337-4297. We look forward to helping you. Without your generous support of Adventist World Radio, stories like this would never have been possible. AWR began in 1971 with the mission to spread the gospel message to hard to reach places. Nearly 50 years later, this is still our mission. Broadcasting from strategic locations around the globe, AWR can be heard in over 100 languages via shortwave radio with a special focus on the 1040 window. Our network also includes over 1,000 FM, AM, DAB, and internet stations. AWR is expanding to all media platforms such as Facebook Audio, YouTube, and AWR Cell Phone Evangelism. Our motto? No walls, no borders, no limits. 
Adventist World Radio is sharing the truth where missionaries cannot go. Follow along as we travel around the world to catch a glimpse into the impact that Adventist World Radio is making. AWR 360 is in the Philippines. Agriculture makes up one-seventh of this country's economy. Many locals make a living selling a variety of fruits and grains from their fertile land. I am visiting the local market in search of some interesting native fruits. Many are unique to the Philippines. Soursop is uniquely spiky and tropical in flavor. It tastes great once you get past its appearance. This hairy looking fruit is called rambutan. It looks like a child's toy. I was a bit skeptical about tasting it, but the vendor assured me it was good. I am glad I followed her advice and sampled it because I immediately fell in love with this fruit. Just like my experience in the marketplace, sometimes it takes someone else's help to guide us to something good. There is a story in the Bible about a man named Saul. He was an executioner for what he believed to be a good cause, but one day, he watched as Stephen was stoned to death and he never forgot it. It changed his life forever. We are now on our way to meet a modern day Saul. As we enjoy a scenic route through dense mountainside forests and through trickling streams, we soon reach our destination. Upon arriving, I am warmly greeted by Daniel and his family. They place a beautiful tropical flower in my hair. He then proudly shows me his radio the tool that truly saved his life. As we step outside, he begins to share the story of his dark past. I don't deserve it, but God has forgiven me. At a young age, Daniel was trained to kill. His father was a commander of communist rebel soldiers, the New People's Army. His cousins and uncles were rebels too. In fact, nearly his entire family was part of this feared group. Daniel was born into this life. It was all he had ever known. He wasn't even a teenager when he made his first kill. Because Daniel did not hesitate to murder, he became the island's top hitman. Throughout the Philippines, he would hunt the people his group marked for execution. He was a messenger of death, always duty-bound to terminate everyone on his hit list. It became easy for Daniel to kill the corrupt politicians, policemen, rapists, and robbers. But there was one death that increasingly began to trouble his conscience. It was the order to kill a pastor who begged him for his life. Daniel showed no mercy. He could not. It was his duty to kill for the rebel cause. The more he killed, the more numb he became never wanting to remember the faces of his victims, especially that pastor. I can't even remember how many people I've killed. One day, Daniel returned home to find his family listening to an unusual broadcast on the radio. His wife insisted that Daniel sit down and join them. The interesting thing is, he recognized the station to be Avenus World Radio. He knew other rebels who were also listening to these programs, and many of them were convicted to give up fighting and be baptized. This was the first time he really seriously listened to what the speaker was saying. He heard about peace and a loving savior who would leave his 99 sheep to go back for the one that was lost. Daniel's heart softened, and in that moment, he understood. He was the one lost sheep. That's when Satan tried to undo all that the Lord had just accomplished. Daniel was informed that his closest cousin was killed in a skirmish. Rage was mounting in his heart and he immediately vowed revenge. He was my family and friend. I knew I had to kill again. Upon seeing Daniel's rage, his wife knew what would come. She begged her husband to please stay and turned up the radio. The broadcaster spoke about a forgiving savior. Daniel felt like the speaker was talking directly to him. His heart broke. Could Jesus really forgive his sins? In that moment, something changed. He cried as he understood that even though he was an evil man, God could still wash his sins away. As Daniel looked down at his innocent child gazing up at him, he made the decision to start a new life with his family. Looking at my past, I know I am unworthy, 
but God still has forgiven me. Only He could change my wretched heart. He studied daily with his wife and soon made the decision to be baptized. Daniel now feels the joy of being forgiven. Like Paul of old, for many years he lived and fought for the wrong cause until Jesus interceded and called him. Now a new man, he lives for Christ. Only through the miracle of God's love can a rebel executioner be forgiven and transformed. There are millions of people today who carry a heavy load of sin. They need to know that there is forgiveness in Jesus, that they can live a life free from the burden of guilt. What a privilege to be able to share this wonderful message of hope with others like Daniel around the world. Thank you for your support that makes this possible. We so appreciate you partnering with us in the greatest calling ever, the saving of souls. Working together, we can make a difference for eternity. Let's head to our final destination in the country of Tanzania in Africa. How evident was the success of one man's faithfulness to God? With colorful clothes and herds of cattle, the Maasai people are spread throughout this land. Watch as one very wealthy Maasai tribal leader does the unthinkable. He puts his faith in God first before everything else. This is AWR 360. We are in Tanzania, a country famous for the Maasai people, known for their distinctive customs and brightly colored dress. They welcomed me with a native jumping dance. From a standing position, these warriors can vertically spring over three feet high. Their smiles made me feel right at home, and they even allowed me to carry one of their precious babies. I enjoyed every moment and fell in love with these dear people who received me with open arms. The Maasai have a semi-nomadic lifestyle. Even this village we are at right now is temporary. Every aspect of their lives revolves around their cattle. The cows determine where the village moves based on where the herds can eat grass. Cattle is their currency and their main source of food. Nothing is left to waste. Even their huts are made of cow dung. For a man to give away his cattle is foolish and unheard of. That's why Abraham's story is amazing. He owns more than a thousand cows. I have over a thousand cows and I'm considered rich by my Maasai people, but something was missing in my life. Abraham's heart was convicted at an evangelistic series and he became a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Most Maasai cannot read or write, so they learn from the radio. Abraham was overjoyed when he tuned in AWR. It was a topic of tithing that really caught his attention. They spoke of faithfulness and trust in God, and that 10% belongs to Him. As his eyes took in all that he owned, he knew what he had to do. In that moment, he made a commitment. Like Jacob of old, he marked every tenth cow. By the time he was finished, more than 100 cows have been designated for God. My friends and neighbors thought I was crazy. To the Maasai, 100 cows is worth about $30,000. You just don't give away the most important resource you own. Despite the ridicule, Abraham remained faithful to God. His neighbors stopped laughing nine months later. They were shocked to see that many of Abraham's cows gave birth to twins and his sheep triplets. Cows rarely have twins. It's considered historic when they do. Immediately everyone understood that this miracle came from a higher power. 
After the Maasai witnessed Abraham's faithfulness, they approached the Union President, Pastor Godwin Lickendile, and said, We want to tithe too. Pastor Godwin was amazed and said, Are you Adventist? They replied, No, but we want God to bless us just like He's blessing Abraham. And praise the Lord, nine months later, their cows had twins too. Here is something else amazing. Every time a thief would steal any of Abraham's cattle, the cows would always return home, as if guided by unseen hands. Now thieves fear stealing from Abraham. I praise God for Adventist World Radio. Abraham credits AWR for changing his life. Everyone sees that the more he gives, the more he is blessed. Thanks to Abraham's testimony, today over 80 Messiah have accepted Jesus and have been baptized. And all of them now listen to Adventist World Radio. These kinds of miracles not only happened a long time ago, they are happening today. Our Heavenly Father is ready to multiply your blessings. The unreachable are being reached by Adventist World Radio. Together, we can finish the work. We need your faithful prayers and dedicated support. We all can look forward to the day when we see the fruits of our labor and praise God for allowing us to be part of His good work. This is AWR 360. Back by popular demand, AWR responded to our world's pandemic in the spring of 2020 by launching an online evangelistic series titled Unlocking Bible Prophecies. These 14 end time episodes have received over 7 million views collectively. There were 1.5 million views across Russia alone. This series has been translated into over 40 languages. Discover the answers to life's greatest questions in the one holy source, the Bible. Please register today and find greater meaning and purpose for your life in the times we are living in. To learn more, visit awr.org forward slash Bible.